This snippet is Publishing Your Silverlight Content. My name is Jeremy Osborne from Aquin Graphics Institute presenting for Microsoft. Okay, so in this snippet we're going to take a look at how you can publish your Silverlight content to the web. So the first thing we want to do is take a look at our final project here. I'm going to choose Project Test Solution. And we can go ahead and press play and our video will begin to play. We can press pause, our video begins to pause. However, when it comes to publishing, the real question that we're asking is, where is this page that we're looking at here in the browser? If we look up on our address bar here in this URL, we're looking at a page called default.html. What's happening is this is being hosted on a local ASP server. And this file is available to us if we look inside of our solution folder. The reason that we need to do this is that there's technically no export or publish function in Blend. So again, going into the File menu, we have options such as New, Open, but nothing called Publish. In order to do this, we're going to need to exit Blend, go to our desktop, and then go into Expression Web. So I'm going to go ahead and close Blend here. And let's go ahead and look at our Fabricam website. So this folder Fabricam VPR1000. We've got a folder called VPR1000, and then another folder within that. And then there's a folder called bin, and then there's a folder called debug. And there's a bunch of material here, but the one that we're really interested in is this, default.html, and this file, vpr1000.xap, or zap. Additionally, we also have our video file. So this zap file is your Silverlight content. This HTML file is the file that is hosting or embedding it. So if I click on this default.html file, we're going to see the same file that we looked at earlier in Blend. So now that we know that, we're going to go ahead and open up Expression Web. In Expression Web, what we're going to do is we're going to open a pre-existing website and then we're going to insert that content into this website. So our first step is to choose File, Open Site, and I'm going to navigate to my desktop, and I'm going to find this folder called Product Demos, and I'm going to go ahead and open that. Within that folder, I've got an index.html page as well as an image folder. If I double-click on the index.html page, this is what our page looks like. Now this isn't really meant to be an HTML lesson, so it's going to help a lot if you've had some experience with this. At the same time, you should be able to follow along fairly easily. So let's go ahead and again look at this in the browser. When I preview in the browser, I've got a blank page, and this is the area where our application is going to live. So in order to do this, we need to import those files that we just looked at that Blend created. In order to do this, I'm going to choose File, Import file. And then I'm going to navigate through my desktop and I'm going to find that bin debug folder that I just showed you earlier. The files that we need from here are the following. Default.html and then I'm going to control click vpr1000.xap or zap. Remember that is our actual Silverlight application. And then I'm going to control click infomercial underscore final dot wmv so that that will also be published. With those three files selected, I'm going to choose Open, and then I'm going to click OK, and you'll now see that they're added to our current website. This is really just a copy and paste. If we double click on default.html, we're not going to see anything. However, if we choose File, Preview, and Browser, we now see the exact same thing that we've seen before. This is great. What this means is we've taken that file and we've essentially copied it over to our own website. So it's now separate from the Blend project. However, with the goal being that we want to import that content into our pre-existing index.html page, we've got a little bit of work to do. Now let me show you why. If I double click on the default.html page and then click down here in the lower left hand corner on the code view, you can see that there's an awful lot of code that was generated just to display our Silverlight content. Now again, without turning this into a lesson on the web, we have three pieces here. We have our CSS code, which defines the appearance of the page. We have a JavaScript here, which handles any errors. So in other words, if a user comes to your website and does not have the Silverlight plugin, it would be useful to direct them to a place where they can find it. 
And then the last part here is the actual HTML. And this is the piece that hosts or embeds our Silverlight content. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to copy those three sections and paste them into our pre-existing page. So let's start with the HTML first. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this text that starts here, div ID equals error location. I'm going to go all the way down until I see this closed div tag. So all this text right here, I'm now going to choose copy. I'm going to go to my index.html. I'm also going to go into code view. And I'm going to locate this section, div ID equals page content. I'm going to click a few times just to give myself some space and then control V to paste. Okay, however, we're not quite out of the woods yet. We need to go back to our default.html. And I'm going to go up and grab this code called script type equals text JavaScript function on Silverlight error, so forth. I'm going to copy that. And I need to put this within my page as well. So I'm going to do that right here after the closing style tag, but before the closing head tag. So let's paste that there. And then the last piece is to get all of this CSS code. So there's a section right here that starts HTML body, and then it goes all the way down to Silverlight controller height 100%. We don't want to take the style tags because those are actually in our index page. I'm going to choose edit, copy. I'm going to go back to my index.html. And again, be very careful as to where you paste this. I'm actually going to scroll way up here to the very top of my page. And right after this line, style type equals text slash CSS. I'm going to control V to paste. Let's go ahead and save our document. And let's go ahead and publish. And now let's go ahead and preview it in the browser. If I choose file, preview in browser, Go ahead and allow this content to run. And here we are. We now have our Silverlight content embedded within our web page. And it works just the way it should. OK, so when it comes down to the final publishing, what this now means is that we can remove the default.html page from our website because it's no longer needed. However, we do need to keep the infomercial.wmv file as well as the xap file. However, this file is now local. We could go ahead and publish this to the web and we'd be able to display our Silverlight content online. This is great. So you've learned a little bit about how to publish your Silverlight content to a web page. For now, my name is Jeremy Osborne presenting from Aquant Graphics Institute for Microsoft.